Another way to express that error is in terms of the burden of proof, and in this form it is pleasingly demonstrated by Bertrand Russell's parable of the celestial teapot. Many Orthodox people speak as though it were the business of sceptics to disprove received dogmas, rather than of dogmatists to prove them. This is, of course, a mistake. If I were to suggest that between the Earth and Mars there is a China teapot revolving about the Sun in an elliptical orbit, nobody would be able to disprove my assertion, provided I were careful to add that the teapot is too small to be revealed even by our most powerful telescopes. But if I were to go on to say that since my assertion cannot be disproved, it is intolerable presumption on the part of human reason to doubt it. I should rightly be thought to be talking nonsense. If, however, the existence of such a teapot were affirmed in ancient books, taught as the sacred truth every Sunday, and instilled into the minds of children at school, hesitation to believe in its existence would become a mark of eccentricity and entitle the doubter to the attentions of the psychiatrist in an enlightened age, or of the inquisitor. In an earlier time, we would not waste time saying so because nobody, so far as I know, worships teapots. But if pressed, we would not hesitate to declare our strong belief that there is positively no orbiting teapot. Yet, strictly, we should all be teapot agnostics. We cannot prove for sure that there is no celestial teapot. In practice, we move away from teapot agnosticism towards a teapotism. A friend who was brought up a Jew and still observes the Sabbath and other Jewish customs out of loyalty to his heritage, describes himself as a tooth fairy agnostic. He regards God as no more probable than the tooth fairy. You can't disprove either hypothesis, and both are equally improbable. He is an atheist to exactly the same large extent that he is an afairyist, and agnostic about both to the same small extent. Russell's teapot, of course, stands for an infinite number of things whose existence is conceivable and cannot be disproved. That great American lawyer Clarence Darrow said, "I don't believe in God as I don't believe in Mother Goose." The journalist Andrew Muller is of the opinion that pledging yourself to any particular religion is no more or less weird than choosing to believe that the world is rhombus-shaped and born through the cosmos in the pincers of two enormous green lobsters called Esmeralda. And Keith. A philosophical favourite is the invisible, intangible, inaudible unicorn, disproof of which is attempted yearly by the children at Camp Quest. Camp Quest takes the American institution of the summer camp in an entirely admirable direction. Unlike other summer camps that follow a religious or scouting ethos, Camp Quest, founded by Edwin and Helen Kagan in Kentucky, is run by secular humanists. And the children are encouraged to think skeptically for themselves while having a very good time with all the usual outdoor activities. A popular deity on the internet at present, and as undisprovable as Yahweh or any other, is the flying spaghetti monster, who many claim has touched them with his noodly appendage. I am delighted to see that the gospel of the flying spaghetti monster has now been published as a book to great acclaim. I haven't read it myself. But who needs to read a gospel when you just know it's true? By the way, it had to happen. A great schism has already occurred, resulting in the Reform Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. The point of all these way out examples is that they are undisprovable. Yet nobody thinks the hypothesis of their existence is on an even footing with the hypothesis of their non-existence. Russell's point is that the burden of proof rests with the believers, not the non-believers. Mine is the related point that the odds in favour of the teapot, spaghetti monster, Esmeralda and Keith, unicorn, etc., are not equal to the odds against. The fact that orbiting teapots and tooth fairies are undisprovable is not felt by any reasonable person to be the kind of fact that settles any interesting argument. None of us feels an obligation to disprove any of the millions of far-fetched things that a fertile or facetious imagination might dream up. I have found it an amusing strategy, when asked whether I am an atheist, to point out that the questioner is also an atheist when considering Zeus, Apollo, Amun-Ra, Mithras, Baal, Thor, Wotan, the Golden Calf, and the Flying Spaghetti Monster. I just go one god further.